So let's have a closer look at the Open Group Architecture Framework and all of the parts that make up that framework. All right, to, to give you a, a better overview of the Architecture Framework, or TOGAF, is uh, let's t take a small little analogy on the side here. So what you've got to do is imagine that uh, your organization is made up of a variety of building blocks, and we've introduced that concept already. So picture over here on, the, on one side is this huge pile of blocks, and it's just all thrown into one big heap on the ground. And for those of you who've played with LEGO, you can, can visualize that quite easily. There's all different shapes and sizes, and it's all plugged in. It's in a little bit of chaos and different colors and all those pieces along the way. Now picture over on the other side is all of that assembled into a, a, a beautiful creation. Right? In this case, we'll take our car example a little further, and that's a perfectly engineered LEGO car with all of the bits working and the doors opening and the wheels turning, all of those pieces. So you've got sort of the two extremes here. And on the one side, that's actually what we discover in a lot of organizations, is that those blocks are just lying all over the place. Well, TOGAF is a means to try and bring order to all of that chaos. And the way you've got to see TOGAF is it's broken up into sort of three sections. So let's extend that example a little further. So what, what you've got in TOGAF, in the middle of all of this, you've got this big bucket. On, and that bucket gives you a little bit of order. So now you can take all of those little blocks that you've got on the side, and you can take, oh, well, let's put all the red ones in the red container. Let's put all the black ones in the black container. Right? And then as you're working through that bucket, you've got uh, already half-made pieces. So there might be a piece of Lego there that's already, maybe it's a, a door of a car, and it's already, it's already pre-built. So now you can actually take that piece, and you can kind of put it in the pre-built container within this bucket. Right. Now, obviously, we're going to be breaking each of these sections down a little more as we progress through our, our, our topics. But really, that's the first piece of it. So imagine this big bucket, and in there, all of these pieces go, and they're categorized in there. Then above that, you have a method. Right? And that is referred to as the architecture development method within the TOGA framework. The bottom piece, by the way, is referred to as the architecture repository. Right? And you'll hear concepts like continuum and all the rest of it, which I'll introduce you to. Now. In the, in, the, in, the, in the method piece, the architecture development method, really it's, a, it's how we do architecture. It's trying to bring consistency to the method of doing actual architecture. And, and really what that says is, OK, well, how do I use all of these building blocks underneath to create an outcome? So how do I use it to create this fantastic car? Well, I can use some of these blocks that are already in, in that bucket. And I can, well, hold on, some of these blocks don't exist. Well, I now need to go and invent them and create them myself. Right? And that's the process that occurs, is what can I use from the bucket, and what can I create and then add to the bucket later on for reuse. And that's the method that sits in the middle. And then right above that is what we refer to as the outcome of the architecture. And that's all to do with the views and the viewpoints. In other words, how can I represent my architecture in diagrams and artifacts and documents that make sense to my stakeholder. So, you know, if I'm looking at an end car, well, you know, it's got to make sense to the end driver of the car. So he's got to be able to understand this is a door and I can climb into it. And that's maybe the driver. That's his particular view of the car. As opposed to maybe an engineer who has to build that car. He, he has another perspective of that car. And maybe it's got to do with the inner workings and how some of the gears and that work. It's the same car, but he has a different perspective. And really, that's what we're trying to show him at the top there is um, we use the method to take all of these building blocks and assemble them into different um, models so that those different stakeholders can get an understanding of it. Well, here's one for the engineer. Here's one for the driver. Here's one for the, in the individual that has to go and create those building blocks. And really, those are the sort of three superstructures of the TOGA framework. And we're, we're going to be working through those structures as we go through the rest of the modules. So let's take a closer look at some of the actual parts that sit within the TOGA framework. Just taking that um, sort of three um, structured view again, remember the, the bucket, the method, and the outputs. What TOGAF has done is broken down into a similar level of detail. So what you have at the top here is your architectural capability, which is all about building your team and your practice and your skills. Here is the method we spoke about, the how of architecture, and it's called the architecture development method. And that also has a variety of guidelines and techniques that are published. In other words, how you can deal with complexity, how you can do iterations, those types of things which we're going to deal with in later topics. Sitting here is the content framework, and that's the a common language that we uh, that TOGAF recommends. So when you're talking about a process, make sure everyone's on the same page. Well, what about a person? What about a role? What about a capability? So it gives you definitions to create a, a common language. And then sitting at the bottom here is your bucket. 
and it has the long name of the enterprise continuum within uh, within TOGAF. And that's also a repository where you can store and structure your data. Remember the, the bucket we referred to previously. And in there is where you store your relevant reference models. Now what you have is you have your drivers within an organization. All right? So these are your drivers and your vision and all et cetera, et cetera. And really this is what puts pressure on your organization to change. And what you do is you use this framework here to help you build up a series of capabilities. So what you've got is a framework that takes into account all of your drivers that are putting pressure on your organization, does some work on it, right, and then produces a series of capabilities which are going to allow you to achieve that outcome. Now you'll notice from this that there's actually a piece missing. Right, and if you remember our three pieces, we had the bucket, we had the method, and the top we had the outputs and the views and that. So TOGAF doesn't actually deal with that here. It's dealt with within specifically the continuum repository and tools and some of the content framework. But just to be clear for, um, from your perspective, is, is, you know, it's good you can actually sort of slot it in a piece of the top here. And here you can deal with your views and your viewpoints and your outputs and your models and those types of things, just so that you can understand where those three phases fit in. And that's really a summary of what's within the TOGAF framework. And we're going to be dealing with each of these in a separate topic.